interesting than listening to all of us talk, but we're, uh, but we're really excited to have you here. Welcome all. I'm Lori Lush and I'm the president of WPI and we're, we're thrilled to have you here with us uh, on this rainy morning to, um, to talk about something really inspiring. And you know, here at WPI, we're all about transforming lives and translating knowledge to action to address big problems and revolutionizing STEM. And all of those things are impacted by what we're talking about here today, which is about building a pipeline of excellent and diverse minds who are going to be the next generation of STEM leaders, who are going to uh, transform people's lives all over the world with their discoveries, their inventions, their technology, and their humanity uh, as, they, as they bring their knowledge to the world. And that doesn't just happen. That doesn't just happen by us knowing it's important and hoping it will happen. It happens because of specific programs, specific things we do to encourage and cultivate STEM thinking. And we all know that STEM is best done hands-on. Not, um, not just book learning, some book learning is important, but learning by doing is the way that we really bring hearts and minds to the STEM table. And so I'm thrilled that um, the Commonwealth, as well as industry partners and academic partners and museums and all of us are coming together around this idea of the importance of hands-on learning. And so um, today we're gonna we're gonna hear more about the next steps that the Commonwealth is taking to help really promote STEM, promote the the um, this great diverse pipeline of STEM minds, and um, the way we're going about that with some real investment in uh, in bringing those minds forth. So it's um, a new initiative to bring together private partners and public funds to support a variety of innovative programs and impactful collaborations and. I am just thrilled to sort of MC here today and introduce uh, the folks who are going to share more with you about um, about the investments that are being made and the support that's being provided. And I'm excited to start by introducing someone who's been a great supporter of WPI and more importantly, an amazing supporter of STEM and of bringing um, kids into STEM from all different, um, in all different ways, in pretty much every way we can think of, really focusing our efforts on building that excellent and diverse pipeline for STEM. So, Lieutenant Governor, Governor Karen Polito, it's wonderful to have you back at WPI, and welcome, we're thrilled to hear from you. Please welcome Lieutenant Governor. Well, good morning. This weather does not dampen the energy and spirit that is evident with each of our groups that we're honoring and recognizing today, including the award uh, recipients, the grantees who we're acknowledging today as well. Uh, let me just first start by saying how excited I am to be back here in person at WPI. Uh, it's just a fantastic campus, and every time I step foot here, I just feel the spirit and the energy, and it's just the, the level of Yes, the innovation that just exists right here is just amazing. And part of it I see in person, but by following uh, President Leshen on Twitter, you do get a sampling of uh, the kinds of things they do here that are really, really exciting. Uh, I think every one of you uh, that's going through your education, uh, whether you're starting out in uh, middle school or you're a high schooler, you have received an invitation to apply from President Leshen, so I take advantage of that. Um, I just want to say personally how grateful we are. Uh, President Leshen has been uh, just a real you know, shoulder behind the effort to expand STEM education here in our Commonwealth. It's been a pleasure working with you for a number of years, including as a very active member of our STEM Advisory Council on our Executive Committee, helping to advise our Commonwealth about how we can expand STEM opportunities, both in our curriculum, K, K through 12, but also making the connections to community colleges, four-year degrees, into the workplaces with employers all across our Commonwealth. And as she is committed, as am I and Governor Baker, Secretary Kaiser, and our entire team, because when you think about Massachusetts, you've got to think about this as a hub of innovation. We lead the country in terms of an economy that is one of the most active and uh, innovative economies in our country. Now that just doesn't happen. You just don't wake up and say Massachusetts is one of the most innovative economies. It happens because over a period of time, 
we have been able to work with nonprofit partners, private sector partners, and educational uh, partners, and government to make sure that we are creating a robust pipeline of talent that can help uh, employers that are trying to solve the problems of the day, as President Leshen said, with the best minds and abilities and ways of working together to bring the best solutions, test them out, perfect them, and then really call something a real solve to a problem. Just take this past year and a half. We have all struggled through this painful pandemic. But at the same time, we have witnessed the amazing discovery of treatments and vaccines that are literally saving people's lives right here in Massachusetts, in our country, and around the world. And the people over at Moderna, right here in Massachusetts, created a vaccine in record-breaking time, never done in the history of the industry. And all that started with people that have abilities and the know-how to be able to work together and do something so rapidly. That was an incredible uh, discovery and invention that is in real time significant for all of us. So it underscores the importance of what we're doing. We're just not here to say, great job with your robotics team, uh, isn't this fun? The reason we're here today is because this is necessary. We need you, starting out in the earliest of grades, to understand how to apply the things that you're learning in school that you might not be able to make the connection to in a classroom, but when you have a hands-on project and you're tasked with a problem to solve and you're working with some teammates that you might know or might not know and you get together and you throw your ideas out there, then you start to put them together and test them out, that's pretty powerful, right? And then you start to make the connections that the work you're doing in computer science or chemistry or math or calculus uh, or physics really mean uh, the difference in helping you bring the best ideas forward to solve problems. So just thank you for understanding that. And there are so many students that we need to make sure tap into these opportunities. And that's why what we're doing at the state level is to make sure that our curriculum contains all of the kinds of things, the experiential learning, as well as the fundamental pieces of the curriculum that can help you have this experience. That's why we think about where is this going to take you? And we've created these innovation pathways to the key industry sectors, life sciences, healthcare, IT, advanced manufacturing, that you can start piecing together the courses in middle school and high school that will lead you to these careers. Why we want to break down barriers and help kids that in high school might say, you know, college isn't for me, but if I get this credential or certificate, I can go directly into work, into a, a manufacturing plant right in my local area where I can make a difference. Or I can start college early and earn credits that will get me into a community college or join one of the 15 STEM Star Academies in all of our community colleges here in the Commonwealth. And, and think about not only seeing yourself in STEM as a student, but asking the employers of our Commonwealth to really step up and engage and inspire a STEM start in their workplace. Every employer needs the talent that you offer. And if they can connect and tap into your talent through a mentorship, Maybe a shadow day, you know, come see what our workplace looks like, and uh, an apprenticeship, any of those things that can connect you to their workplace. That's like the secret sauce. Because I said, and the governor said, can I be a little selfish here in the Commonwealth? Why don't we create this robust pipeline of talent? We want to keep you here. Our employers need you, and if we can get you into their workplaces early on, they'll keep you in their workplace, and you can be part of a team in, in, a, in an employer uh, experience that will help you unlock the potential in terms of solving great, great challenges that certainly we know about today that will, and will continue to challenge uh, the world. So this is a really important effort, but we've got a really exciting uh, announcement today, a couple of them. We have the fourth annual STEM week that is going to be October 18th through October 22nd. Woo! We love STEM week because it allows us to 
spotlight and showcase what's happening in K-12 education all across our Commonwealth. And last year, we didn't miss a beat. We did go virtual, and we had STEM week virtual, and we were able to work with all of our STEM networks, and the one neat thing that came out of that, for instance, people in the Berkshires were able to share what they were doing in their communities with people on the Cape and the islands. So we were able to really connect a lot of our communities throughout the Commonwealth, so we might continue to have that to be a part of it, but also getting into your classrooms in person and really highlighting and showcasing all the great STEM stuff that you're doing. Uh, we also want to continue to engage you and, yes, challenge you, because you are up for that task. And that's where the design challenges are really incredible. And we've asked some of our partners, the nonprofit partners uh, and private sector partners, to come up with some really neat uh, challenges for you to engage in. And we are granting these groups, and Secretary Kaiser will talk about this a little bit more, uh, seven organizations, of course, WPI and Force Robotics being one of them, with $300,000 to help them uh, train teachers, design curriculum, and give the design challenge to the school districts to accept so that you guys can really have a great STEM week and learn even more. Uh, the seven organizations, BioBuilder, Coder Z, First Robotics at WPI, Gale Force, Kids in Tech, Museum of Science, United Way of Massachusetts Bay and Merrimack Valley, Wade Institute, iTunes Learning, and the Mass STEM Hub and Project Lead the Way are our partners in this effort. We thank each and every one of you. I cannot wait uh, for STEM Week and to see this uh, in person this year. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping us close skills gaps and opportunity gaps and for creating the talent that we know is necessary for the future success of our Commonwealth. Congratulations to all of you. I'd like to now uh, turn it back over to President Leshen, and then you'll hear from Secretary Kaiser. Very good. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And again, congratulations to the to the grantees. Um, yeah, let's hear it for them one more time. Thank you. I'm so thrilled that WPI is uh, is a part of this initiative. And um, you know, I love STEM Week. Obviously, it's awesome. But I have to say, around here every week, STEM Week. So, uh, <laughs> so we love we uh, we celebrate STEM all the time. And, and uh, as I know, the Lieutenant Governor does as well. Um, but excited to really think hard about how we bring STEM to so many more kids and, and communities than than are involved with it. It might just be the thing that sparks that excitement and that interest and sparks that connection and lets somebody imagine themselves. Um, solving a problem that's going to impact the lives of millions of people, just like they did at Moderna, as you, as you mentioned. So um, one of those organizations that I am proud to say has had a huge impact on, on millions of young people all over the world, and in fact, some of you may be reading about these past couple of days, the, um, the young women on the Afghan first team and what is going on with them and trying to make sure that they are safe and supported. This is the kind of organization that first is. It's completely mobilized right now to try to help these um, all-girl uh, Afghan robotics team make sure they're uh, safe. Um, and that's, and that's FIRST is the organization I'm talking about. And I am the vice chair of the board of FIRST, I'm proud to say. And, and FIRST was started by Dean Kamen, who is a WPI alum. And so we've been partners with FIRST since its founding over three decades ago. Um, and robotics is one of those great things, as we just heard from our fabulous students over here, that can really spark that imagination, especially and at an early age. With, you know, Playing with Legos is one thing, building a Lego robot that actually does stuff that kind of feels to me a lot like the rover that we have on Mars uh, is, uh, is amazing. So for three decades, um, FIRST participants have developed self-confidence in STEM, meaningful friendships and valuable real-world skills that open pathways and prepare them for work and life. And of course, that need is even greater now and as we really work to reach into traditionally underrepresented communities to encourage our participation in STEM, um, and so it's very important that we work to connect all communities to the opportunities that, for, that, that organizations like FIRST and Project Lead the Way provide. 
Um, so we are partnering with WPI with New England first in this grant to provide teacher professional development, make sure the teachers know how to help the kids get engaged. We're providing robotics kits, curriculum, and other resources for students to build their confidence in STEM through hands-on learning. And I want to thank our Robotics Resource Center folks who are here and other STEM uh, K-12 supports who are here as part of our WPI community for the work they're doing there. And I want to invite um, the chair and president of New England First Board of Directors, uh, John Bujo, to, to speak to us a little bit about um, the hundreds of first teams in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine that, that New England First oversees, um, and, and share with us his thoughts on this, uh, on this exciting day and this exciting announcement. Just so you know, he's been involved, John has been involved in First for nearly 20 years, and he's received the Outstanding Volunteer Award in 2003. Well, while he was also working full-time for BAE Systems, and since he retired from BAE in 2019, he's been able to dedicate even more time to FIRST Robotics, and we're so grateful for that. John, come on up and share some thoughts with us. Thank you, Lori. Appreciate that. You know, so for those of us who have talked to all the students here today, isn't that outstanding? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to see all the talent. I can only envision a world where you guys are the new technology innovators and technology leaders. It's going to be a better place. There's no question about that. You know, it's interesting uh, listening to the Lieutenant Governor talk about uh, the companies in Massachusetts and the need to fill that engineering pipeline. Having come from the sponsorship side for 25 years, I can tell you there's techniques to do that. And uh, it's one of the priorities we have in New England First, is to connect companies with how do you build and sustain an engineering pipeline. And so we're going to real, work real hard on that. And so, uh, okay. and by the way, I want to say another thing. Having been involved with all the states within New England, uh, you know, Massachusetts gets it. Right? They put their money where their mouth is, they put their time, uh, they apply their time to STEM, and it, it's really important. So, you know, a lot of times we hear all the politics, we hear the news, we don't understand what's really happening. But well, let me tell you, the state of Massachusetts really puts their money where their mouth is when it comes to STEM. And they know how STEM influences the economy and how STEM contributes to the success of the companies in Massachusetts. So that's a good thing. I wasn't going to say anything. But uh, let me first of all start by recognizing the longstanding relationship that first, New England First has with Worcester Polytechnic Institute. WPI has been a long advocate for FIRST, and for that we're truly grateful. You know, when we look at FIRST, you know, it, it's, it really takes a community to, to, to make it all happen. And with WPI, we really have these shared goals that everybody is aligned to. And so it makes it work, and it's gratifying, and, and our achievements have been great. And so again, thank you so much for that relationship that we have. When we think of New England for us, and we think about our priorities, I think we're directly aligned with WPI in the state of Massachusetts in that we want to ensure that every student has access to a STEM education. Now, our current priority there is with young women and rural and underserved. And New England First does that by having a strong continuum of programs that we support. First Lego League for elementary school, First Tech Challenge for middle school, and First Robotics for high school. And so what First tries to do is take the mystery out of science and technology at a very young age. Through First, students learn that it really isn't rocket science. If you apply the fundamentals, you can do anything. And oh, by the way, it's fun and rewarding as well. And it's not just about robots. You know, a lot of people will say that FIRST doesn't build robots, it builds people. Now, while FIRST does work such that you have an appreciation for science and technology at a very young age, you also learn some very important life skills along the way. Those skills of teamwork, collaboration, conflict resolution, leadership, the skills that will serve you well no matter what you endeavor uh, throughout your pursuits in life. And the other thing is, we know that first works. We have the analytics. We have the real life stories. We know that first participants, depending on the demographic, 
are two to four times more likely to pursue a STEM education. The real life stories, they never end. The Lieutenant Governor gave me a real opening here. So many years ago, the one that sticks with me, many years ago there was a student on one of the first teams that my company sponsored. They were a senior, they were about to graduate, and I said, so what are you going to do upon graduation? They said, well, I really don't know. <clears throat> I can't afford college, and I probably can't handle the academics anyway. So I said, have you considered a community college? And they said, well, a little bit. And I'll tell you what, if you apply and get accepted at a local community college, I'll guarantee you an internship. So let's fast forward 15 or 20 years. Married, three children, PhD in material science. And oh, by the way, interesting enough, still works for the company that gave the internship way back when. So, uh, so it really works. It is about providing access, working together to provide access to our students. So again, I'm going to close by thanking WPI and the state of Massachusetts for your commitment in STEM. To the mentors and coaches that happen to be with us today, a special thank you, because none of this happens without you. And just the students, please continue on your STEM journey, because the world is coming on you. And I can envision a better world because of you. Thank you. for being here with us and for all you're doing to support these uh, young people in, uh, in their discovery of uh, how awesome robotics are, is, and, uh, and how even better the teamwork that goes into building them is. So, uh, thanks again to all of our robotics teams for being here. And as we're going to bring it on home with another very good friend to all students in the Commonwealth, uh, the Secretary of Education, Jim Pizer. Jim has um, is a is a very powerful advocate for uh, equity and inclusion in STEM and in education and in advancing the learning of, of everyone across this Commonwealth. And he's someone that I have had the pleasure of working very closely with, probably more closely than either one of us wanted over the last 18 months through the COVID uh, through COVID challenges. But you know, in addition to making sure everyone's getting a great education in this Commonwealth, he's also been very concerned with making sure they do so in a safe and productive environment. So, Jim, it's great to have you with us, and please come on up. Thank you very much, uh, President Leshen. Um, I, I mean, I enjoyed spending more time with you. I don't know if, the other, if, if it went the other way, but it was a, it was a pleasure for me. Um, but I am excited to be here uh, at, at WPI in, in, in part because um, I heard the governor say once that you know, the way you build a great, uh, innovative STEM economy is you start institutions like WPI and wait 150 years. Um, and of course, I know there wasn't a lot of waiting going on at WPI during all that time. There was a lot of uh, incredible investment, incredible uh, development of, of programs and people and systems that have gotten them to this point that have helped drive our economy and drive uh, this commonwealth to the incredible place that it is now. Um, but it, is, it doesn't happen by itself outside of that either. There need to be uh, programs and systems and investment and, and policies in place to take advantage of institutions like this in order to create the ripple effects across uh, the, entire, the entire commonwealth and indeed the entire country. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to uh, be here today to talk about some of those um, sort of uh, pebbles, I guess, that we're throwing in the water to create those ripples, uh, including the fourth annual STEM week, which is uh, tremendously exciting for us to get off the ground today, especially because uh, we'll be shifting from all virtual to hopefully mostly in person, fingers crossed, uh, as we go into the fall, which is gonna be great to get back to that uh, kind of exciting hands-on, literally hands-on experience. Uh, but also to acknowledge and recognize uh, some of our key partners in that effort. 
Uh, and I'll go through uh, a little more detail of what the Lieutenant Governor mentioned about who those grantees are, what they're going to do, uh, to sort of uh, give you a flavor for what STEM week is going to be like uh, in October, October 18 through 22 of this year. Um, you know, everybody knows that STEM is the driving force in the Massachusetts economy. Um, and it was never more clear than during the pandemic, as uh, Lieutenant Governor mentioned. Uh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't sort of build on what uh, President Leshen uh, just talked about in terms of, uh, in particular, her leadership in helping us reopen the economy, reopen the Commonwealth, reopen institutions of higher education in the wake of COVID-19. Uh, there was a reopening committee which the Lieutenant Governor co-chaired uh, and it spun off a higher education committee which Lori Leshen chaired along with several other uh, you know, esteemed colleagues and, and uh, college presidents around the Commonwealth uh, who at an incredible level of detail and uh, building on all of the expertise and resources of their institutions produced really powerful documents and protocols and processes and, and recommendations for how colleges could operate safely during the pandemic and coming out of it. Uh, and I can tell you because I've been involved in a number of calls with uh, leader, uh, education leaders from other states, in particular around higher education, we have been sharing those documents that have been produced by, uh, by Lori and her team with them, and they have been taking them you know, eagerly and actively and putting them into place uh, all over the country. So uh, thank you very much for that. I mean, your leadership was really tremendously important, uh, and it has helped get us to this point, which is maybe not all the way through, but pretty far uh, through, and in incredibly, uh, with a track record over the last uh, uh, academic year, which is really incredibly um, compelling in terms of the safety and health of students on our campuses across the state, across the country. So thank you, Lord. But as, uh, as great as we're doing here in the Commonwealth and at WPI, we have to do uh, more. We have to do more just to maintain our position of leadership because everybody else is investing and uh, accelerating and trying to catch up, uh, but also because we need to bring everyone in the Commonwealth on board. Not only uh, every region of the Commonwealth, but also all of our people, uh, you know, including those uh, young people and adults who have been so underrepresented in the STEM fields, both academically and in the workforce. Um, and that's the mission of the STEM Council, um, and that is the sort of focus of STEM Week, which, you know, uh, which I think has already been mentioned, goes under the, uh, the heading and the theme of See Yourself in STEM. Uh, and that is, you know, particularly important in, in terms of trying to make sure that people not only get to experience STEM, and young people in particular get to experience STEM during STEM week to spark that interest and excitement, but also that they get to see that other people like them uh, across a wide swath of industries and, and regions of the Commonwealth are actively involved in STEM, that there's a future for them. Uh, and just to give you some you know, flavor for how far we have to go, uh, in computer science and engineering, uh, the representation of, of people of color and women in particular is uh, significantly lower than it needs to be in order for, to create those opportunities for young people, but also to generate the human capital and talent that's necessary to drive our economy to the next level. So, um, this, the STEM Council really has been pursuing three basic strategies to, to get at that, of which STEM Week is a critical part. One is to ensure that we're building foundational skills for all students through applied learning. And that's everything that you're seeing around you here today. Uh, it's through curriculum like Project Lead the Way, uh, Engineering the Future uh, from Museum of Science, I2 Learning. Uh, it's through establishing the first uh, uh, computer science standards that the Commonwealth have ever had and teacher certifications in computer science and creating opportunities for real hands-on applied learning in K throughout K-12. It's also creating pathways, and the Lieutenant Governor talked about innovation pathways and, and STEM Early College and uh, 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 STEM Starter Academies and a variety of other strategies to, not, to, to, to make it possible for, for students to take advantage of that interest and that uh, excitement that has been generated and to, to, to carry it through high school and into college and into the workforce. Uh, I remember one of the um, early STEM Council meetings that I was at um, 
and, uh, and Lori Leshen, uh, Hick described middle school as Death Valley of, uh, of STEM or science uh, because students at a young age are very interested in science in part because of the way it's taught in elementary school. And when they get to middle school, they quickly start to drop off and lose interest and unfortunately that never comes back. So we need to uh, elevate that Death Valley into, uh, into a sort of a, a, an upward slope. Uh, and need to make sure that we have the next steps available for students when they get to high school and beyond. Uh, and then finally, it's about employer partnerships and about creating those connections between schools and employers with work-based learning experiences and internships, things like Mass STEM at Work, uh, which was uh, initiated uh, about four or five years ago, apprenticeships, um, co-ops in particular that are through our uh, career vocational technical um, uh, organization, um, uh, schools as well as the new career technical initiative uh, that was launched uh, just 18 months ago. Uh, so all of, again, it's sort of thinking about making sure that everybody has the foundational skills so they have options available to them. Creating pathways so they can take advantage of the interest and excitement that has been sparked in their youth uh, and is creating those kind of connections to the real world uh, and, empl and employment that make it possible for them to pursue careers uh, beyond school. So that's the work um, that we're about. Uh, all of this, uh, certainly, that we're talking about today with FIRST Robotics, but also with STEM Week is a critical part of it. But there are uh, many other partners who are uh, part of this work. And so what I'd like to do um, is to go through the, uh, all the grantees as well as the partners and give you a sense for what they will be doing during STEM Week uh, and, get, and give you a sense, uh, hopefully, to share our excitement for what's, what's to come this October. Uh, and I don't know who's here representing uh, the various groups, so I'll, I'll, I'll go through each one, and if the, uh, when I call out the name of the organization, if, if there are any representatives here, if they could stand up, uh, so we could acknowledge you, and uh, I can read a little bit about what's going on during STEM Week. So let me start with the BioBuilder Educational Foundation. So BioBuilder Bio is inviting students to engage with its idea accelerator, a digital offering that allows students to learn the foundations of biodesign and challenges them to develop a biotechnology that solves any challenge they want to address. So that's BioBuilder Educational Foundation. <laughs> Next is Coder Z by Intellitech. Did I get that right? There we go. Coder Z invites students and educators to explore C-STEM, the fusion of computer science and STEM. Students learn core STEM, coding, and robotic skills while supporting 21st century skills such as critical thinking, creativity, and collaboration. First Robotics and WPI. New England First invites students and educators across the Commonwealth to engage in robotics teams. First programs enable students from kindergarten through high school to understand the basics of STEM and apply their knowledge in an exciting challenge while building habits of learning, confidence, and teamwork along the way. Gale Force Education. I don't think anyone from Gale Force is here, uh, but Gale Force Education brings power engineering to high school students through Engineering for Resilience, which focuses on the design and operation of New England's power grid. In a series of challenges, students will design, test, and improve power grid system components and a model power grid system. So, Gale Force Education. <laughs> Kids in Tech Inc. Kids in Tech STEM Challenge will help students visualize the concepts of AI, understand how these systems affect the world, and appreciate the potential they have to change the future. Students will complete engaging activities that allow them to see what is possible with AI and culminate in a project in which students will design their own smart cities using AI principles and programming language. Kids in Tech. The Museum of Science. The Museum of Science will engage with the museum's newest permanent exhibition, Engineering Design Workshop, powered by MathWorks. Challenges will engage students as they engineer to solve problems related to environmental challenges humans face across the globe, set in the context of urban, coastal, suburban, and rural settings. Museum of Science. Yeah. 
United Way of Mass Bay and Merrimack Valley. In partnership with the Boston Public Schools, United Way of Mass Bay and Merrimack Valley's BOSTEMS initiative challenges students to explore social justice for civics by using STEM as a lever for change. Through this design challenge, teachers will support their students in local data collection and synthesis to build a social justice message and project around equity in the city for issues like deteriorating environment, lack of affordable housing, transportation equity, and food security. You had a way. The Wade Institute for Science Education. Anybody here from Wade? No? Um, so the Wade Institute, uh, the Salem Sound, Coast Watch, and the Lloyd Center for the Environment have designed a Hurricane Heroes Storm City, Massachusetts, a phenomena-based challenge that will allow educators to use grade-level appropriate science and technology concepts to give students the opportunity to learn about storms and their impact. So the Wade Institute. In addition to that, we have two other uh, partners I want to note. Uh, first, I2 Learning, which has been with us since the beginning, and which uh, in, in many ways, as uh, anyone from I2 here will uh, recognize, we kind of stole STEM Week idea from them. Uh, they had STEM Week, and we uh, decided to, to jump on top of it and make it a statewide initiative, and they've been a tremendous partner the whole way. Uh, building on I2 successful week-long and month-long programs in schools and districts around the country, I2 is now partnering with select Massachusetts districts to pilot I2 full year, a complete school year of immersive, interdisciplinary, project-based curriculum. So I2 Learn. <laughs> and then the Mass STEM Hub. Uh, and Mass STEM Hub, uh, which is supported by the 1-8 Foundation, uh, has been a key partner not only in STEM Week, but in supporting the development and expansion of Project Lead the Way, uh, as well as uh, new project-based learning works, or PBL works, uh, which they'll be featuring in this upcoming STEM Week. Mass STEM Hub is a program with the 1-8 Foundation, is providing the opportunity for schools to connect directly with industry professionals to help students deepen their learning and link their coursework to real-world careers. With Student Industry Connects for STEM Week in 2021, Middle and high school students are invited to submit Project Lead the Way and Open SciEd projects. Open SciEd is a curriculum development uh, project that's being done by uh, Mass STEM Hub in uh, partnership with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to receive authentic feedback from STEM professionals on their work. Classrooms that submit projects will also have opportunities to continue the conversation with professionals through follow-up virtual classroom visits. So Mass STEM Hub, thank you. <laughs> So uh, the, the incredible news here is that through these partnerships and challenges, uh, Mass STEM, uh, STEM Week uh, for uh, 2021 is really already off the ground and is going to be a tremendous success with a lot more momentum and energy, frankly, than we've ever had before. Uh, and I know uh, Lieutenant Governor, I'm sure, will uh, agree that when we started this four years ago, with, uh, which was really, I have to say, her vision, um, we weren't quite sure how it was going to go. Um, but it's remarkable how much uh, uh, genuine enthusiasm and energy there is out in the field at all levels to engage in this kind of activity and to, to create these relationships between the private sector and schools and employers in order to really spark a vision for where students can go with STEM and what the future can look like. Uh, and I think it's just been a tremendous success and it's growing every year and I'm confident we'll continue to do so. Uh, I think that wraps up our program. Uh, I'm told that our uh, first robotics teams are going to stay around for a little bit in case uh, you haven't had a chance to see uh, their work and talk to them. Uh, I'm certainly, I've only started uh, my, my path through, I think I only got through two, so at this rate I'll be here all day before, uh, before I get from the rest of them. But I'm really grateful to them for being here. Uh, I'm grateful to WPI uh, for hosting us and for uh, President Leshen's leadership as well as for First Robotics and providing this great uh, uh, sort of work of, of the students in order to kind of inspire all of us to continue this work forward as we uh, look forward to STEM Week next year, or I should say this fall. Uh, thank you all.